We're going to look at inverse and contrapositive vocabulary. Um, so let's consider an example we looked at in a previous video. That was a conditional statement we made. If your mark is 86% or greater, then you have an A. And we said that that was a true statement. And remember the converse is what we would get when we take our hypo hypothesis which was 86% or greater, and our conclusion, then you have an A and swapping them around. So the converse, remember, was then if you have an A, your mark is 86% or greater. So we've looked at those already. The conditional statement, the original one, the converse, which is just swapping around the hypothesis and the uh, conclusion. Now let's look at what an inverse is. The inverse is a statement that is formed by taking the opposite hypothesis and the opposite conclusion of a conditional statement. So if this was our con conditional statement, if your mark is 86% or greater, then you have an A. The inverse of that would be if your mark is not 86% or greater, then you do not have an A. So let's think about that. If my, if my mark is not 86% or greater, that means it's like 85 or less, yeah, then I'm not going to have an A. So the inverse in this case is also true. So the inverse goes back, it's always tied back to this conditional statement. It's just the opposite of this. So instead of being more, greater 86 or more, now we're not 86 or more, and we're not going to have an A. So that's the inverse. And then finally, the contrapositive is a statement made by taking the opposite hypothesis and conclusion of a converse statement. So this was, these are directly tied to this. So the converse was, if you have an A, then your mark is 86% or greater. So the contrapositive would be, if you do not have an A, then your mark is not 86% or greater. So if I don't have an A, if I've got a B or a C plus or something, then yeah, obviously my mark is not going to be 86% or greater. So in this example that we we're looking at, um, the inverse and the contrapositive are also true statements. Let's look at another example. So from a previous video, we used this one as well. If you are texting, then you're using a cell phone. That was a conditional statement, and that we said was true. That was true. If you're texting, then you must be using a cell phone. The converse, where we swap the conclusion and the hypothesis around, now says if you are using a cell phone, then you must be texting. And we said that was false. Um, we could be doing other things. We could be using our phone or uh, calling somebody on the phone, or we could be using our, our phone for data. So the inverse, remember the inverse is always tied to the conditional statement. Uh, the inverse would be the, the opposite of this. So if you are not texting, then you are not using a cell phone. So let's think about that. If I'm not texting, then I'm not using my cell phone. That's, that's going to be false too, because I can, f I can find a counterexample to that. I, I might be using my phone for uh, texting or whatever, social media stuff. I might even be using my phone to make a phone call. Um, so that one's false. The contrapositive, which is connect to the converse, so the converse was if you are using a cell phone, then you are texting. The contrapositive then says if you are not using a cell phone, then you are not texting. And this would be true. The contrapositive says if we're not using a cell phone, so if my cell phone's in my pocket or in the drawer or whatever, then I'm not texting. And that, that would be true. And in fact, if you've got a true conditional statement, then always your contrapositive will also be true. Those are, those are linked together. So those are a couple of new terms, um, the inverse and the contrapositives. And they are simply the opposite of the conditional statement and the converse.